السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ والحمد للہ والصلاۃ والسلام على رسول اللہ وعلى آله واصحابه اجمعین My beloved brothers, my sisters, this is the great day of Eid. Eid al-Adha, the Eid wherein which a sacrifice is made in order for us to learn lessons and to be able to benefit from. It was an act of worship of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. No one brags about an act of worship. It was an act of worship that Allah, Allah Ibrahim himself never came out and said, you know what I did, I did this. And all of you need to celebrate this. He never said that. Ibrahim alayhi salam did not have pride in him, boasting about what he did and telling everyone else to follow that because he did it. But rather, it was Allah who granted it acceptance as time passed and made it compulsory for all of us. Not for the meat of it alone. The meat of it is just a perk, if we can word it that way. The meat of it is something that is, yes, it's there for us to enjoy, but the enjoyment is not deserved if we do not connect and reconnect with Allah on this occasion. A person who's not interested in learning what the sacrifice is really all about doesn't really deserve to put a piece of that meat in his mouth and to say, wow, did you see the biltong I made from this meat of qurbani and so on? You know what? It's besides the point you haven't quit the bottle, you haven't yet quit your gambling, you haven't quit your bad habits. So what's the point? But if you didn't even see the meat for some reason, but you quit your habits. That sacrifice of quitting something displeasing to Allah is far more beloved by Allah than just eating some meat and enjoying it and saying we did this and we did that and you should have seen the cow and how big the bull was and so on and so forth. My brothers, my sisters. Ibrahim alayhi salam's acts of worship were not announced by him. They were announced by Allah. When you engage in an act of worship, there's no point of announcing it. Today, at a time when we live in the social media hype, everyone wants to quickly advertise. So much so that a man has a phone in one hand and the other hands are in sujood, showing, hey, I'm making sujood for Allah. Okay, that might be a bit far-fetched, but you know what I'm saying. One hand in dua, the other hand, the phone is actually showing the, the one hand. What happened? You're supposed to be making that with two hands. They say, no, the other one's the phone, don't worry. That's the age where we've gotten. You give something, you want to show it. Yes, if you're doing something on behalf of others, where it's an organization responsible to carry out some duty upon them because they have taken it on their shoulders to do it for others, then if you want to take a few photographs or you'd like to document it to prove that the work was done, by all means it is permissible. But my brothers, my sisters, it is Allah who allows a person to be mentioned after his death in a good way. In the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, he speaks about it. In fact, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. Allah says, we left for them, one by one, the messengers, a good word in others that followed later. Subhanallah. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, what happened? Allah instructed him to sacrifice his son. We've heard that so many times. Shaytan came to distract him and he managed to overcome the whispers of Shaytan and the trials of Shaytan. Hence, we have what is known the pelting of Shaytan in Mina today. As we stand here about to fulfill Salatul Eid, there are those who have gone for the pilgrimage and the Hajj. They are pelting what is known as the Jamarat. 
They are pelting the positions where shaitan was at the time. So they say, the big one, the middle one, and the small one. Seven pebbles here, seven pebbles there, seven pebbles thrown at the last one. What is there today that those who judge and pilgrims have to go and pelt? Why? And you see people collecting little stones, pebbles, the size of a pea, perhaps. And they are supposed to say, Allahu Akbar, and throw one. Allahu Akbar, and throw the other one. Allahu Akbar, until they throw seven there, seven there, and seven there. That's the second and third day of pelting. The first day, there's only seven pebbles, the big one. What's the significance? There's no shaitan there right now. Shaitan was there at the time. So there surely must be some significance. Point number one, it is the obedience of the instruction of Allah. Understand it or not, Allah told you to do it, you do it. Subhanallah. That was Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was told, sacrifice his son. Did it make sense? The answer is no. It did not make human sense. But what did make sense is this instruction is coming from Allah. So when Allah instructs you to do something, do it. When Allah Almighty has ordained something, understand goodness is in it, even if it doesn't really make sense to you. That's it. When Allah says, stay away from this and this and this, stay away from it. And if you have fallen in it because you're a human being, turn back to Allah in repentance, Allah will forgive you. And when Allah instructs you to get up for fajr and to do this and to uh, engage in certain things, engage in those things because that is what there is goodness in. Why do we stay away from food and drink during Ramadan, during the daylight? Because Allah instructed. Later on, the health benefits and all those are perks. That's not the main aim. It's a perk. You ask someone, are you going to fast in Ramadan? Yes, because I need to lose weight. Well, your intention is totally wrong. Totally wrong. You need to lose weight. That's not the primary intention. It might come as a perk. And by the way, many of us gain weight in Ramadan because the way we operate when it comes to the time of iftar, like we haven't seen food, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and forgiveness. We thank Allah for whatever He's given us. So, that pelting, you need to realize what is more important is to remove the devil within you, the shaitan that bogs you down every day, helping you to develop your bad habits. That shaitan within is what you need to remove there in Mina when you are pelting. Today is a celebration of overcoming the devil's whispers in order to sacrifice something that Allah had asked that's what today is. So all of us will enjoy the day when, when you get closer to Allah. Allahu Akbar, as the first stone hits the pillar, they built a pillar where this pelting should be happening in Mina. Some people actually go there believing that shaitan is there. And so I remember when I had gone for Hajj some time back, and a man took his umbrella and he started hitting this pillar. And people tell him, what are you doing? He says, no, this shaitan comes to me every day. It's about time I eradicated him. No, it's not that. Another takes a rock and he wants to throw the rock. And little does he know he hits the head of a person who's in front of him. He says, well, that must have been shaitan. No, may Allah grant us ease. That's not how it is. It's the significance, a pebble, small pebble. The idea is to cleanse yourself so that when the Hajj is done, you return home as clean as the day you were born in terms of no sins. Subhanallah. You know when they say you return home as clean as the day you were born, it's actually cleaner from one angle, from one aspect. What is that aspect? You see, when you do good deeds and bad deeds and then you seek forgiveness, do the good deeds also go away? No, they don't. The bad deeds get wiped, gets, get wiped, gets wiped out. The bad deed gets wiped out. And do you know what? The good remains. But when you were born, you neither had good nor bad. So what was better? From that angle, it's better now. I sought forgiveness. So much so that Allah has one 
very powerful offer for us. Very powerful in the Quran. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Allah speaks about those who have committed sin and so on and then He speaks about this beautiful offer that He has. He makes an exception and He says those who have repented and thereafter done good deeds, which means you repent and you change your life. Those are the conditions. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته